phones, John in North Carolina. Take it away, John. How are you? Oh, day, George. Thanks for taking my call. Sure Love thing. you, man. Well, uh, I've been listening you. to you for the past five years, and you have seriously changed my life. I cannot look at the news or anything else that's going on in the world without a different <laughs> kind of uh, twist of, uh, of other little, things going on. A little perspective. And you, and, you know, I was talking with somebody about that today, too, John, who said, you know what, you can watch the news all day on television, but once we listen to all of you at Coast to Coast, we understand the news better than yeah. what they report to us. And, and, and that, that was a pretty good compliment. But you? I had a question for sure. you. Cause I've been listening, like I said, and I heard some some uh, talk or discussion about like praying mantis people. Yes. I'm the guy who sent you the email asking about if you ever seen that movie, They Live. Yes. And they, oh, my goodness. I, I've never, like I said, I watched that in the 80s. Didn't think nothing of it, but I watched it again recently. I said, oh, my goodness. Is everything Coast, of talk, Coast, of Coast talks about? <laughs> uh, do you have an opinion on who the praying mantis people are? Is that like a gray... Are they like angelic? Are they? Do you demonic? remember the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the one with Richard Dreyfuss? Oh, sure. Okay, right toward the end, when they were at that mountain side area, all all the uh, the military people and the government ops people, and they were okay. waiting for the big craft to arrive. Right. Remember when it came in and it basically landed and it opened up, and then everybody that that spaceship had picked up or snatched over the years, the little kid, uh, soldiers, Air Force people, everybody. They let them go, and they came down the platform. And then right after everyone had come off the ship, this tall, praying mantis-looking being kind of walked out. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. So, that, so you think they're aliens? Oh, yeah. That's what they are. And is that part of the Nibiru folks? The I, I don't know. Planted I, the seeds of humanity, I, maybe? I don't know where they're from. Oh, my goodness. But they scare people because they just look so insect-like. Oh, wow. Because, you know, like the uh, the greys are supposed to be bad, but the reptilians are, or, you know, I can't keep them... <laughs> the reptilians well. are the bad ones. They no, say. the reptilians are the bad ones, and the greys are kind of like neutral. Yep. So, do you think the uh, praying mantis may be uh, the the benevolent stuff? Uh, that, boy, people? that I'm not sure. That is a good question. Oh my goodness! I mean, I like. You ever see a, a little real praying mantis? The insect. They're, yeah, they're like, kind of cute. I don't cute. know about you. I get I get feelings from them. Like they understand what I'm. Saying. Yeah, they look at you. Their head turns and their head turns, and yeah. I think they you know they use telepathy and say, I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I keep wondering if they're little tiny aliens. But you think that there are praying mantises on Earth? Or the, wow. Is that something? It Wouldn't that be something? You never know. Okay, hey, thanks for the call. Hey, George, you're awesome. Bye. John, have a good weekend. Next up, Jordan in Ohio. You're on the air with us. Hi, Jordan. Hi, uh, George. How are you? Good. Thank you. Great. Uh, first uh, and foremost, of course, I absolutely love the show. I'm a bartender. I live in the city, but, but um, and actually, uh, the caller you just had, summed it up perfectly for me. Um, I've, I've been listening to the show for a while. I've kind of developed my own question, and I'm not sure if you guys have discussed this before or if this is a first-time thing, but uh, we all have, there's so many interpretations of different spacecraft, different aliens, like the greys, the insect type, and my question is, because we know, or we, I guess we assume, because so many, uh, so many people have ed evidence of it, is that we've been visited by multiple types of, of alien mm -hmm. life forms. Mm-hmm. Now, my question is, with advanced technology, they could either help or harm us uh, uh, pretty radically, really. And n uh, none of the species has really bothered to contact us in a specific way. Now, my question is, and I don't want to sound too Star trek -y, but is there kind of there's some sort of federation contract saying you can't really interact with our species, our culture, that kind of thing? There's always been talk that there's been some kind of unwritten agreement between governments and them and that there really would be no uh, interaction to the point where we would be knowledgeable and aware of who they are or what might be going on and uh, uh, I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, to me, that sounds a little too bizarre. Right, interesting, I, but um, yeah, I, does I, that I, kind of build on a conspiracy theory of... Yeah, it say, sure does. Uh, with the Roswell crash, people say we gained a lot of technology from that. Is that one of those things where we can use this, but we can't use this? I mean... And, and, and the fine. thing about, you know, why did we stop going to the moon? Did they tell us Absolutely. not to show up? Uh, you know, all of it's interesting. 
I don't know. I, I do believe we've been visited. I believe it's continuing. I think there are too many great eyewitnesses out there, pi pilots, police officers. Not that their uh, eyewitness testimony is any better, but they're they're out there. And these are credible people who don't really want to lie. Right, it, exactly. I was going on the uh, the integrity of the witnesses. It's usually Air Force pilots. It's people in the government. It's people, you know, things like that. Yeah. It's generally people that don't. You know, you get a lot of that kind of shotgun turn the park. Oh, I saw a UFO, but a lot of it is is really kind of in depth evidence. And the bottom line is, I guess everybody seems to be seeing these except me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for the call. Let's go to uh, next. Our Hal in Missouri. You're on the air. Hey, Hal. How are you? Well, good evening, George. I'm doing fine, man. You're you're doing great. Love right. the show. You sound like Dan Aykroyd. I do. You do. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, I've, I've been listening to Coast to Coast uh, since Art Bell started it up. It's a and, long uh, used, time. A long time. Long time. And I used to think that he was, when he was talking about the big black triangles, that he was just hyping stuff to get listeners and you know, having, <laughs> having fun. And then he said, well, he saw one. And, uh, well, 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 he's still hyping. And then I saw one and became a... True believer. Yeah, you realized it wasn't all hype after all. Right. And then you started talking about uh, the old hag and sleep paralysis, and I was questioning that. Is this really going on? Or, and then or is George hyping it? <laughs> yeah. Well, February 9th, I was sound asleep, middle of the night, and it was like someone was pouring fluid, a... a pouring something into me, and it started at my head, and about the time it got to mid-thorax, uh, I decided this is bad. This is sleep paralysis. I, I don't know what it is, but it's um, it's not good. And it, and it was like an entity was doing this. Yes. And uh, there wasn't any old hag, nothing on the bed. It was just my body being paralyzed from the head down. And I thought, this is not right. If it's, a, if it's a nice entity, they wouldn't be doing this. They would have asked first. So I decided this was evil, not good. And I screamed in my thoughts, go to hell. I'm a Christian. And it stopped. And I sat up and said, yep, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, and I haven't had that experience again. But I, I, I tried to get in the other night with that gal. I thought this, I wanted to corroborate her. Um, Diane Morang. Yes, Diane. Yeah, yep. her, her experiences with this. and, and uh, she, It sounds like you are now a believer. Very much uh, so. In all this. Yeah. Very much. Oh, yes. Very much. So. It, it'll happen for sure. Okay. Hey, thanks for the call. Love the show. For, let's go to you, Jessica in Fresno. You are on Coast to Coast. Hi, Jessica. Hi. What are you doing? I'm listening to the radio station with my mom. Oh, and, and that is in Fresno? Yeah. Well, that's good. How old are you? I'm 19. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of nervous. Oh. Um, okay. It was or in quarter, 2005. No. Um, I was in the car listening to the radio. I was on the phone. And all of a sudden, this four-feet creature full of hair, I couldn't see the face, but it was full of hair from head to toe came running from behind the car and it stopped in front of the car where the headlights are at. It stood there for a couple seconds and it ran straight into the orange tree that was in front of the car. Now what did it look like to you? To me it looked like a mini Bigfoot. Okay. About how tall was it? About four feet. Four feet. So it could have been a baby. Yeah. Like a miniature one? Yeah, very possibly. Sure wasn't anybody in a little uh, costume? I'm positive. <laughs> I was I was real freaked out. Was like, it was it afraid of you? I don't even think it saw me. I was in the dark in the car. Well, those things have pretty good eyes. Really? Yeah, but uh, you only saw it for a glimpse. Too bad you didn't take a picture of the thing. I know. I would have been too scared. <laughs> we never have the cameras when we need it. Exactly. But, like, it, it ran into the orange tree, and then I turned on the headlights. Nothing was there. I turned them back off. And a couple of seconds later, I saw two red glowing eyes. Uh -huh. And then 
that's when I totally freaked out. I called my dad. I was crying on the phone. And then he hung up with me. He called my mom inside the house and told her to come check on me. I was honking the horn. I was crying. And I just, I didn't even look at my mom. I ran straight into the house, into my room, and closed the door. And, you, was, and you were the only person to see this? The only person to Gosh, see this. We need witnesses. Mm -hmm. And you hope you uh, ever see this again? No. Not at all. 19. And so that means you were...